Welcome to Evening Prayer with the Stamford Methodist Circuit for Friday the 25th of October. The scripture focus for our prayers and reflections this evening moves us onwards in Chapter 3 of St Mark's Gospel, as recommended by the Methodist Church Prayer Handbook. And alongside this, we continue to include reflections on One World Week, which has traditionally been observed at this time of year. To call us into our prayer, we've been using some of the words from the psalm recommended for each day by the prayer handbook. Today, this is Psalm 21, which is one of the so-called royal psalms, hence its focus on the relationship of the King of Israel with the nation's God. O Lord, the King rejoices in your strength. Surely you have granted him eternal blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. For the King trusts in the Lord, through the unfailing love of the Most High, he will not be shaken. As we've done each evening so far this week, we turn to God in prayer, using some words which originated in the Methodist Church in Brazil. They appear in the Building Community section of Calls to Prayer, an anthology which brings together a selection of prayers from previous year's editions of the Methodist Church Prayer Handbook. So let us pray. Dear God, our Father, we lift our voices to you in community prayer. Help us to be faithful to your call. May we know your will, follow your way, carry out your mission in love to all people. Give us strength to take our stand for life against all the forces of death. In the name of Jesus, the way, the truth and the life. Amen. The Stamford Fair Trade Group is observing One World Week with displays and activities open to the public at Stamford Arts Centre. The displays include amazing artwork by local students reflecting the theme, community, celebrating what it means to you. Along with the wider One World Week aims, of awareness raising and campaigning to build a just, more equal, inclusive, peaceful and environmentally sustainable world for future generations. The hymn recommended for today by the Prayer Handbook is Singing the Faith 336, Charles Wesley's Son of God, if your free grace again has raised me up. This recording is from South Cliff Methodist Church in Scarborough.
We hear today's recommended Bible reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 7 to 12, in an animated form, using the text of the contemporary English version of the Bible. Jesus led his disciples down to the shore of the lake. Large crowds followed him from Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem. People came from Idumea, as well as other places east of the Jordan River. They also came from the region around the cities of Tyre and Sidon. All of these crowds came because they had heard what Jesus was doing. He even had to tell his disciples to get a boat ready to keep him from being crushed by the crowds. After Jesus had healed many people, the other sick people begged him to let them touch him. And whenever any evil spirit saw Jesus, they would fall to the ground and shout, You are the Son of God! But Jesus warned the spirits not to tell who he was. Our reading began with Jesus withdrawing to Lake Galilee. When the Gospels tell us about Jesus withdrawing, it's often because he needed peace and quiet in which to reflect and pray to his Heavenly Father. That seems to be true in today's reading. However, we also need to bear in mind how yesterday's reading from chapter 3 of Mark's Gospel ended, with Jesus having become embroiled with the Pharisees in a controversy about observ observing the Sabbath. The result of this was that the Pharisees went away and began to plot how to kill Jesus. Therefore, Jesus' withdrawal to Lake Galilee may have had something to do with self-protection, with Jesus putting some distance between himself and those who sought to destroy him. Whichever of these was the case, whether it was for peace and quiet or for self-protection, and it could have been a mix of the two, the crowds still found their way to Jesus from far and near. A boat was summoned to be at the ready, again so that Jesus could protect himself from the crowds. It wasn't that he didn't want to engage with the people, but his physical safety needed to preserve as the people crowded in, wanting to touch him. Towards the end of today's reading is the first point in Mark's Gospel that Jesus is called Son of God by someone else. In this case, it's the evil spirits who, who identify Jesus as such. The final words of today's reading reveal a significant characteristic of Jesus as he's portrayed by the author of Mark's Gospel. This characteristic is that Jesus orders the spirits not to reveal his true identity as Son of God to others. This sort of thing, what is technically referred to as the messianic secret, is repeated frequently by Jesus in Mark's Gospel. It might seem strange to us that Jesus wanted to keep his identity a secret, but we need to remember that Jesus was tuned in to God's timing Jesus didn't want to interfere with this by people turning to him simply because of his celebratory status. Jesus needed time to fulfil God's calling and purpose. Jesus was more than just a celebrity miracle working healer. He was and is the Son of God, the Saviour of the world, who still invites us to come to him.
our prayer, we use some words by the Reverend Ken Todd, a past president of the Methodist Church in Ireland. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, on the cross you shed your most precious blood to bring peace with God, and by your resurrection you revitalise us with new hope that love is stronger than hate, good is stronger than evil, and truth is stronger than falsehood. Come to your world today by your life-giving spirit. Come heal the sick and restore the broken. Come release the fearful, renew the weak with grace, and save us all for your glory. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. There's only one more day, Saturday, to visit the One World Week exhibition at Stamford Arts Centre. I encourage you to do so if you can. And so once again, we close our time of prayer and reflection with words from a longer prayer written by Ian Priest, included in the Building Community section of the Call to Prayer Anthology. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for ourselves in our daily work, that the power of your love may work through us, that your divine purpose may be fulfilled, and that all that we do may be to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you for sharing in this time of, ref of reflection and prayer during One World Week. God bless you. <laughs>